going to tell anything new because gasification you all researcher know better than me who are directly working on gasification i am working side by side with gasification because gasification opens a new avenue to us right because uh, all the biomass mo mostly biomass we are not talking nowadays about coal gasification right we are seeing all the biomasses and and try to do uh, from its waste not directly we are trying to recover as much as chemical possible from different reactions or different other other kind of methods right like, uh, making alcohol fermentation after that whatever we are left with we are trying to do a gasification with them and what is gasification so everybody knows everybody has the basic knowledge but still i am doing the same thing i'll just uh, discuss about the basic things of gasification but i am not here dealing with any particular kind of raw material because rice as sewage grass corn stover all these things are very common throughout the world people are working on that but rather i'll tell what are the gasifications and what are the processes mostly in bulky way what are the divisions of gasifications right so why this gasification started that also you know but still i am just uh, uh, for your recollection i'm just uh, describing it the energy dependence of the world is a serious and economic and national security issue so as the world population increased approximately in the range of 6.52 to 7.35 billion with an annual increase rate of 1.3% during 2006 to 17 just the, see the number the population has been increased so much the world primary energy consumption nearly increased at the same time the energy consumption also increased that is also in the range of oh, 11.27 to 13.15 ten to the word 3 mtoe that is million tons of oil equivalent with an annual increase rate of 1.67% during the same period right so the primary energy consumption included uh, some numbers that is around 3 by 10 to the 3 mtoe of coal so here uh, it's not clear the uh, multiplication sign is not coming it's not together right just uh, take a note of that <laughs> with an annual increase rate of 2% right a annual increase uh, that primary energy consumption in terms of oil again uh, for coal and then oil it's an 1.01% and if you see the increase rate for gas natural gas that is 2.26% it's a huge amount and lot of reservoir are now getting dried that is another problem especially i am staying in trinidad and tobago right trinidad and tobago is a gas based country right and now all the gas fields are getting depleted so we we have gone to the deeper field to get gas but the world situation is so bad uh, because uh, you know the downfall of oil and gas prices so it requires lot of resources to get a drilling or getting a pure amount of gas so now projects are going on but slowly so everything has come to a still state i mean uh, a, a a stand situation because we have a lot of methanol plants which is being produced from natural gas and we are not getting a good amount of currency by selling them because all prices have dropped down right so so that's the thing that's the concern uh so we we have uh look we are looking for new sources and it's it's not today as so from 17 people started working on that but now it is uh, the uh, the bigger is much more to look into a proper source right so that's why people are working on all these bio resources how to exploit these bio resources right so there are thermochemical technologies generally thermochemical technologies include so like uh, from any biomass or any kind of hydrocarbon sources that liquefaction then carbonization combustion pyrolysis and then gasification a liquefaction is a thermochemical process in which biomass uh, undergoes complicated chemical reactions in a solvent medium to form mainly liquid products right this is bio oil hydrothermal liquefaction is a process in which water is used 
as the reaction medium and the process is carried out in sub or supercritical water under sufficient pressure to liquefy biomass for bio oil production. The heavy oil obtained from the liquefaction process is a viscous starry lump, which may sometimes cause handling troubles. In this case, some organic solvents like propanol, butanol, acetone, and any kind of uh, uh, this, uh, low viscous solvents are added to the reaction system. Generally, catalytic aqueous liquefaction may result in higher bio oil yield than the non catalytic aqueous liquefaction. So, the heavy oil obtained from the liquefaction process is a viscous starry lump, as we have said. And the bio oils obtained from the liquefaction process is generally contain high contents of volatile organic acids, alcohols, aldehydes, ether, esters, ketones, all these things, right? Uh, this oil components could be catalytically upgraded if we wish to do that. Otherwise, we can recover some of them if it is important uh, fuel or important chemical. And then we can upgrade it to yield an organic distillate product. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> now, next is uh, the carbonization. Carbonization is a process uh, that typically hits biomass feedstock in a kiln or retort. Basically, pyrolysis is occurring there at temperatures around 400 degrees centigrade and uh, around 400, but it starts from less than 400 and it goes up to. 900 uh, some cases uh, the, around 1000 also so uh, in the absence of air the produced biochar is also known as charcoal so everybody knows it and uh, carbon enriched because charcoal means that is porous carbon enriched and it's a black solid so that can take part in other reactions or directly we can use them in other processes Right. So it is observed that hydrogen to carbon ratio that is very important, right? Hydrogen to carbon ratio and oxygen to carbon ratio and HHV, right? Or high heating value, right? And uh, this higher heating value of the raw feedstocks, feedstocks are generally around 1.5 then oxygen to carbon ratio is 0 0.55 and 16 to 24 is the me mega joule per kg we can get as hhv or uh, our <clears throat> high heating value right uh, so respectively the hydrogen to carbon ratio and oxygen to carbons or hhv of the biochars are typically like uh, uh, 0 0.12 and 10 to the power, uh, uh, sorry, 0 0.12 to uh, 1.24 and 0. Point, this E should be actually copied from somewhere so it becomes uh, from my other notes. So it, it the E is basically it should be an hyphen, it's a dash. So 1.12 to 1.24 and 0 0.8 to 0.49. Likewise, uh, and we are getting a very high value for this chart that is 22 to 35 megajoule per kg respectively. Now combustion, uh, combustion is another process, the thermochemical process where fuel is burned in an oxygen excess atmosphere. So everybody knows it, the chemical energy stored in the fuel uh, is released to produce heat, right? Which can be used for cooking, space heating and electricity generation. So basically, it's a reaction between hydrocarbon and oxygen. Ultimate goal is to produce carbon dioxide and water, right? But in this, uh, as oxygen has been used, it's an oxidation. So a lot of heat will be generated, right? And uh, biofuel with air, if we use air, so excess nitrogen. So air means nitrogen plus oxygen. So 21% 79, so everyone knows it. So what we'll get as we will get the nitrogen also, extra nitrogen and nitrogen will absorb the excess heat. That is one way the pros, means one way it is an advantage, so some way it's disadvantage that directly we cannot, we cannot uh, take out the heat. 
uh, but with nitrogen, yeah, generally we are doing it because uh, directly go with uh, oxygen, it is uh, economically very expensive. So most of the cases, uh, air is being used. So for theoretical combustion, C and H contents in the fuel would be converted to CO2 and H2O and uh, produced heat can result in a high temperature like say around uh, 1500 or 2000 degrees centigrade. Practically the combustion would be incomplete thereby leading to production of CO sometimes, yes, carbon monoxide. Most of the cases in general you will find carbon monoxide and we generally maintain a carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide ratio to check it whether it is uh, beyond the limit or not. So carbon monoxide also, if you use oxygen also, so sometimes carbon monoxide uh, diffuse the heat, right? Uh, so it creates a low temperature. Um, but any kind of biomass, for biomass, what's the disadvantage? Actually, we can burn any biomass in this method, right? In combustion but the moisture content should be less than 50 percent so that is very difficult because whatever biomass we are getting so that uh, we it is having a huge moisture and we have to put a preheat step right and that preheat step also requires a lot of energy and capital investment so these are the uh, kind of disadvantages but uh, still they are popular we are using it and now in terms of pyrolysis uh, Pyrolysis is typically defined as a thermochemical decomposition um, of biomass feedstock at medium 300 to 800 degrees centigrade to high temperatures like 800 to 1300 degrees centigrade in an inert atmosphere. Combustion, we are using oxygen, here we, we not, right? So biofuel, when are putting heat input there, so liquid and synthetic gas and Plus solid will be generated, some ash content will be there, plus some tarry liquid uh, will be resulted, right? So basic reaction is like that. Basically, the carbon is reacting with the steam, means the water, uh, to produce the hydrogen and carbon dioxide. And uh, of course, uh, always will not 100% oxidation. So there will be generation of carbon monoxide too. If you see the second reaction, and if it is natural gas, so natural gas uh, can be digested with this one, this steam, and we'll get hydrogen and carbon dioxide. On all the cases, our goal is to produce hydrogen. If we cannot convert the complete CO to CO2, right, carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide also having some heating value, we can, we can burn that thing too, right? But main disadvantage in pyrolysis is the most of the reaction, of course, some reactions are there, side reactions, uh, they are exothermic, but we need a large heat input. If you see the delta H of all these reactions, all are positive, right? <clears throat> so it's uh, we can see the advantages. The main product uh, of this uh, biomass um, pyrolysis, the yield may be very high, right? It can we can go up to 75 percent yield directly without any kind of recycling right and a bio uh, this uh, pyrolysis may have uh, may have a high content of carbon it can be resulted and so that carbon can be used for further reactions um, and low nitrogen and sulfur content so all these advantages will be there so we, we can understand the high heating value hhv will be also very high for this uh, uh, pyrolysis process right So now we are talking about, we are going to talk about gasification. So uh, the gasification is also a thermochemical process in which the reactions between the fuel and the gasification agent, right? There must be some agent, might be this is oxygen sometimes, sometimes steam and sometimes uh, uh, like uh, other things where carbon dioxide can be a gasification agent sometimes, right? So gasification agent, uh, the reaction between the gasification agent and the uh, biomass or any mass uh, take place 
and syngas, also known as the producer gas, product gas, synthetic gas, or synthesis gas, is produced. Means our motive is to produce synthetic gas, right? The syngas is mainly composed of uh, all these things like carbon monoxide, hydrogen. Sometimes, depending on the reaction, we try to switch over the reaction towards more hydrogen production. Sometimes, so we with carbon monoxide, we are getting satisfied, low hydrogen production. And then, of course, nitrogen will be there because uh, most of the cases we are using air. So nitrogen will be associated with that and carbon dioxide. Of course, some hydrocarbon also will be produced. Uh, CH4 is produced. CH4 is a desired thing because the natural gas we can use for reform, uh, reforming reactions and other reactions where we can generate a lot of energy, right? Uh, other than CH4, there are C2H4, C2H6, etc. And we, if we can put some towers to separate propane, propylene, butane, butene, so that will be advantageous. We can sell it out for to the other industries. Very small amounts of, uh, of course, sulfur. If sulfur is there, always uh, sulfur chances are there in different biomasses. So H2S due to nitrogen NAC production because there are uh, most of the cases, uh, the temperature goes up uh, rapidly, so product, uh, chances of production of ammonia will be there. And tars may also be produced. In general, biomass gasification is the thermochemical conversion of organic waste, uh, feedstock in a high temperature environment through which biomass can be converted not only to synthetic gas for energy generation, but also to chemicals, right? That is another advantage. Here with this reaction, we can produce useful chemicals like methane, ethylene, adhesive, fatty acid, sulfate tanks, etc. Right. So based on the gasification agents used, biomass gasification process can be divided. Uh, yes, so the process can be divided into air gasification, like using air. Oxygen gasification using oxygen, steam gasification using steam, carbon dioxide gasification, and supercritical water gasification using supercritical water, etc. There are other gasification also, but they, these are prime gasification which are being used regularly uh, and they are popular also. And energy, I should not say energy sensitive, means energy wise, uh, it is. Uh, it creates a lot of saving, right? Uh, so, and, and we are habituated to these processes and uh, processes have been uh, fine-tuned. So we are doing good with all these processes. Generally, oxygen gasification, steam gasification or carbon dioxide gasification and supercritical water gasification results in higher HHV. So heating value is the uh, high heating value, right? So how much, energy we are generating in terms of heat that is very important to us so that's why this hhv's uh, uh, production is very high and we are going towards uh, this gasification different kind of gasifications so hhvs of thin gas than those obtained by air gasification where the carbon dioxide steam oxygen etc gasification <clears throat> Uh, obtained by air gasification. So air, uh, of course, you can understand air means only 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen, right? So heat, there will be chance of heat diffusion through the nitrogen. So that's why other processes are much more efficient and they, they react efficiently other than air, right? Uh, we can use excess air. Then again, the chances of uh, diffusion will be there. Heat diffusion will be there but they are much more active uh, other processes. However, air gasification is the most widely studied. Why? Because air is cheap. We don't have to put a cryogenic separation unit to separate oxygen and nitrogen because it, it will be a costly affair. You can understand the capital investment will be very high. And when we check for economic feasibility, that will be very difficult. An applied process is because the gasification agent air is cheap, the reaction process is easy, and reactor structure is very simple. Uh, am I clear so far? Yeah, 
it's okay uh, uh, if you are participating can you just please uh, put some your comments sir yes sir clear sir yeah. okay okay thank you very much Uh, so for biomass gasification with steam, carbon dioxide or supercritical water, the overall gasification reaction is generally endothermic. That is a kind of, I, I should say, any process, there are pros and cons. From the very beginning, we are not getting the heat, right? That is one of the cons here, one of the disadvantages that, uh, that the, all the processes are mostly endothermic. And external heating is, heating is therefore required during the whole gasification process, right? However, for biomass gasification with air or oxygen, the overall gasification may be endothermic or exothermic. Anything is possible. Uh, these reactions can be controlled by change varying the air or oxygen content. So if we change the content, if we go towards the means uh, complete reaction by recycling or some other means so by if we increase the rate of oxidation or uh, <clears throat> oxygen content in the reaction mixtures uh, we can get more oxidation so we can move towards uh, exothermicity generally a specific air or oxygen content corresponds to a specific gasification temperature if no external heat is provided, right? And heat provide, you can understand. So heat provide means again, it's an energy intensive process. So far, the problem is that by biomass, we can generate heat, but it is not giving very high calorific value like, a, uh, like inside a refinery heater. In refinery heater, what we are doing? The waste fuel oil, we are just burning with oxygen and it gives a huge amount of heat, right? Due to its exothermic use. So those are the cons again. So we have to overcome. Gradually, a lot of processes are going on and people are overcoming how to get rid of that uh, heat problem. So if higher gasification temperature is required or designed, external heat should be input or a higher air or oxygen content is needed. So air gasification. So there are different kind of gasifications I have told you. So here, uh, the first one is air ga gasification. This is very popular. For air gasification of biomass, the gasification process occurs between 100, 800 and 1800 degrees centigrade. Uh, and the reactions can be divided uh, into four parts. Uh, four parts means all the reactions for biomass. The first very important part is drying, right? So we have to release the moisture. As I have said, most of the biomasses have uh, a huge amount of moisture, right? So we have to release the moisture for that. We need again some heat input. So that is again energy intensive, you can understand. So with biofuel, we have to make a dry biofuel so that all the hydrogen could be released. And if we do in the plant a better heat integration, so all this hydrogen, this H2O, we can use because if it is in a steam format, so where the low temperature increase is required, we can use some kind of heat exchanger to use this H2O, right? So a lot of uh, thinking is going on and people are working on that. Now, second step is devolatilization. So dry biofuel, uh, from the dry biofuel, we can produce the carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, CH4, CH2H4, like other processes also. Some steam, again, it will come out and uh, from carbon and primary tar because that thick liquid, uh, which we cannot convert anything. For that, we need to have, might be some vacuum distillation tower or some catalytic cracking unit. So that will be again energy as well as cost intensive. So what we are doing so that thick liquid or primary tar can be burned directly or we, it can be used in some other heaters, small heaters. We can use them as, as a feedstock. So from the primary tar also, yes, uh, if we burn it, we can see the carbon monoxide dioxide CH4C2H4 can be recovered then from the primary tar the secondary tar uh yes the secondary tar will get and secondary tar again uh, from the secondary tar if we go for carbonization 
So nearly um, pure carbon or activated carbon we can produce. And then of course, as a byproduct, the carbon monoxide may be possible or hydrogen is also possible. So there are other reactions. So, so these are the reactions. So now the reactions, how it is occurring, say combustion. First, we are talking about combustion. When combustion is occurring, so carbon monoxide is getting converted to carbon dioxide. As you understand, this is a complete reaction. This carbon monoxide is an incomplete stage. It generally occurs at high pressure and high temperature. That incomplete state, again, with a particular amount of activation energy is given with oxygen or air, whatever. So it will be completely converted to carbon dioxide. And if you see it's delta H or enthalpy, that is negative, right? That means it's exothermic. Likewise, some hydrogen, we, we are desiring hydrogen, but some hydrogen also in the process always will be there, always being produced, and, but they will be converted to um, water, right? Or steam means high temperature, of course. But that is also um, exothermic reaction. So heat-wise, uh, by this combustion, we are always getting advantage because all reactions are using oxygen. So it's a kind of oxidation. So heat will be generated. If you see other reactions like natural gas, it is producing again carbon monoxide and hydrogen. And if uh, some carbon, when it is charred and going towards activated carbon, so the carbon will again react with uh, oxygen to give CO2, and that is also giving a very high calorific value. Means, uh, yeah, the exothermicity gives a very high value. You can see it is around 400 kilojoule per mole. And carbon monoxide, of course, uh, it is giving a low value, but still uh, it's an oxidation. And carbon monoxide has a chance to go for carbon dioxide or complete conversion. So that way it is advantageous. Uh, in the reduction section, if you see, uh, then uh, this some carbon dioxide always reacts, so it reacts back with the natural gas. So inside system, it is occurring always, but they require a lot of energy. How they are getting the energy? Because first, when combustion is occurring, it is releasing a huge amount of heat. And that is triggering other reactions of re reductions because they require heat. If you see the reactions here, if you see the reactions here, you can see, see, CH4 and CO2, it's producing CO and H2, but it's releasing a lot, um, not releasing, it is taking a lot amount of heat. It is absorbing the heat. The steam re reforming reactions also, uh, steam reforming, if you see the methane steam reforming, uh, it is producing carbon monoxide and hydrogen. It's a desired reaction, right? Because it is producing carbon monoxide as well as hydrogen. Both can be uh, combusted and both can be uh, can be burned again, right? To get more heat. So, but it requires heat, and that heat can be generated by exothermicity. And uh, water gas shift reaction, that is, uh, yeah, it's just opposite to that uh, the reforming reaction. So water gas shift reaction is basically, it's a combination of carbon monoxide and uh, um, steam, and which is producing carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So hydrogen production we are getting. So this is also a desired reaction, but this reaction is, because oxygen is taken by carbon monoxide, so it is releasing heat, right? This is exothermic reaction. And there are some typical reactions, which is very common in, in a steel plant or a blast furnace, right? This, these reactions, like water gas shift reaction and this boudoir reaction, equilibrium reaction, um, they are obeying, you know, from your school days, uh, following all Lee Chatelier principle, etc. Um, blah, 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 all these things they will follow. But this reaction is very important, this Boudouard equilibrium reaction, where more carbonaceous component, which is the carbon percentage is very high. It is reacting with carbon dioxide to produce carbon monoxide. It's a desired reaction. Though it is producing, it requires a lot of heat. Why? Because this carbon monoxide has a chance to go for combustion and it can give some calorific value. And water gas reaction is this uh, carbon and um, water is reacting to produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen. 
the same way and uh, <clears throat> and methane production reaction is a, it's a general reaction because uh, it is happening uh, in the process inside the process so some methane is being produced uh, mm, yeah so by this way so that carbon is reacting with hydrogen so these are the set of reactions mostly these are the very common reactions for producing carbon monoxide hydrogen carbon dioxide or methane but other than methane uh, there are ethylenes we have seen propylene and propane ethane all these things are there some uh, will be there some little bit polymerization will be there at this temperature right hydrocarbon polymerization will be there so but they are not major reactions we just talked about major reactions right so a gasification is a sensitive and complex process it is highly influenced by the biomass composition particle size uh, so gasification temperature and the equivalence ratio right what is equivalence ratio we are coming to that equivalence ratio is a crucial operating variable in biomass gasification it is the ratio between the actual amount of air required uh, divided for gasification per unit mass of a biomass and the theoretical amount of air required for complete combustion and it is calculated as air i over air j where air j is the stoichiometric air right um, and air i is the actual amount of air required right so what is the difference what, uh, what are the deviations from the stoichiometry we, we, we we can estimate from this equivalence ratio it depends on the biomass as i have said if biomass is more carbonaceous then this equivalence ratio will be low and if it is uh, uh, it is having lot of ash content lot of other hydrocarbons long chain hydrocarbons which is having the hydrogen to carbon percentage is high there we require more air right so like the different ratios are there gradually we will discuss now the second category is other than air the oxygen gasification uh, the oxygen gasification uses oxygen as the gasification agent and its uh, reaction principle is very similar to that of gasification the use of pure oxygen as a gasification agent provides producer gas with a higher hhv than that of its counterpart obtained from air gasification because of the absence of nitrogen so you can understand from it uh, in the same gas the presence of oxygen gives an exothermic contribution of course so that the higher oxygen content in the feeding steam the higher the achieved temperature but the lower heating value of the produced seen gas right on uh, the compared with air gasification oxygen gasification has a higher reaction temperature right faster reaction rate higher thermal efficiency and higher cost because oxygen involved so we have to separate the oxygen from air right so that higher cost is uh, lying there but otherwise uh, rate wise uh, rate wise and heat wise heat content wise uh, we are getting a good value and the calorific value of the syn gas we are getting is about 10 to 18 mega joule per uh, normal meter cube so it's 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 a very good uh, data right it's very good uh, numerical value for oxygen gasification the oxygen equivalence ratio is a like i have said the different equivalence ratio or different ratios are being used to see the efficiency so for oxygen uh, we are using a oxygen equivalence ratio like air equivalence ratio for the uh, case of air is a crucial factor but same way it is uh, treated uh, oxygen i is the actual amount of oxygen supplied and divided by the oxygen j that is the theoretical amount of oxygen required right uh, so far do you have any question if you have any question generally uh, i i deliver something after that i hear the questions but if you have any question it's uh, it's uh, uh, no problem you can you can interrupt me and ask me questions right 
I know it's quite boring because I am talking about only the processes because I am covering here today only the processes and and some kind of reactor just uh, I'll give a picture but any particular process I am not covering here means what kind of work is going on that you know from day to day all the journal papers regularly people are using different kind of uh, biomass and people are working so hardly uh, so a lot of biomasses are being used in actually are being used but at the for the sake of publishing paper people are doing a lot of I should not say the term useless uh, who is the work which doesn't have any physical implication wherever they're seeing a biomass some some tree branches some tree fruit everything they're trying to gasify or trying to recover some chemicals from there so that is really not needed in this world we are now need to see how we can replace the conventional energies right anyways uh, the, those kind of discussion it's not a forum to discuss all those things so uh, uh, okay i'm coming to steam gasification so steam basically h2o you know so uh, steam gasification refers to the reactions of steam with biomass at higher temperatures including both water gas reactions and water gas shift reaction steam as an oxidizing agent is attracting more attention because it gives better results in terms of h2 to co and hydrogen yield h2 to co ratio and hydrogen yield means percentage of hydrogen in same gas because if we can use steam as you see the h2 is there this hydrogen we can recover the hydrogen because oxygen will go with the hydrocarbons for some reaction so we can we can get some hydrogen more amount of hydrogen in the same gas during the gasification processes so it's happening so hydrogen is a fuel with high calorific value and it is highly efficient uh, energy source uh, which has become a renewed focus of interest in the industry uh, thanks to its you know, environmental advantages in the sense that hydrogen is not harmful and it's a very kind of clean fuel right the presence of hydrogen means uh, h2o gives an endothermic contribution so that the higher the water in the feed as fuel moisture as well as added steam the lower the temperature in the reactor but the higher the potential heating value of the produced syn gas so that means we require a lot of heat but what the fuel we are producing that can give us a big amount of heat so again the process will be same here the wet biofuel we have to make it dry then pyrolysis will occur so pyrolysis are different reactions so all products are more mainly same but we will get some uh, of course uh, the hydrogen and from primary tar uh, what we will get the hydrogen will be an added advantage so we will get hydrogen so secondary tar we will get so secondary tar uh, again can be used to recover some of the chemicals right so here reaction will be more or less same like water gas reaction is the main reaction here so carbon and uh, h2o will react to produce co and h2 and of course uh, you know that uh, it is endothermic so we need a lot of heat and some methanation reaction may occur and that is um, exothermic overall it is endothermic steam reforming of methanization uh, methanization such so steam reforming this is a reforming reaction to produce hydrogen and carbon monoxide uh, right so it's a common reaction it is being used for any kind of big industry like methanol industry ammonia industry this reaction is very important where we are using natural gas right and but it is an endothermic and water gas seep reaction where carbon monoxide is reacting with um, steam to produce carbon dioxide and hydrogen so all reactions are more or less same in nature the boudoir reaction also occurring here to produce carbon dioxide just just in opposite equilibrium from carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide right in between in the interim if you don't hear me properly just alert me right so now introducing steam to the gasification process is advantages because it improves the hydrogen content 
in uh, sink gas by raising the partial pressure of H2O inside the gasifier. Steam to carbon ratio is a crucial operating variable in biomass gasification, which is the ratio between steam mass flow rate and the total carbon feed mass flow rate. So this S here, steam to carbon ratio is very important here for steam gasification. You, you can understand like previous cases, the raw materials, the theoretical requirement and actual requirement always gives a ratio and by which we can understand how good is the uh, biomass for, for our gasification reaction. Like previous case, we have seen the equivalence ratio of air for oxygen and here it is SCR, steam carbon ratio. And it is a ratio of NS to NC and of course NS, you can use any kind of symbol. It is a, it's a particular journal paper it is used, so I'm using it. And the journal paper where I have taken all these things, I'll, I'll, I'll tell at the end, right? Don't think it is of my work, just I am, I'm discussing a review, right? A review of all these classifications. Uh, two, three journal papers I collected and I have some personal experience, so all these things together, I am just uh, uh, presenting it to you. So where NS is the steam mass flow rate, right? And NC is the total carbon feed mass flow rate, right? So likewise, hydrogen gasification is there where hydrogen uh, is uh, used, right? And uh, So hydrogen gasification has been developed to increase the gas production level, especially the methane, right? If we increase the hydrogen amount, then the chances of conversion from carbonaceous material towards methane is uh, high. And CH4, you know, CH4 is uh, giving a very high calorific value when it is burnt in air or oxygen. So by burning the CH4, the natural gas, right? we can get a large amount of heat as well as we can run the turbine of the gas with heat and uh, heat and gas together can give a can generate a, a good amount of electricity so these are the advantages right so by introducing external hydrogen into gasification process we can get ch4 during this process hydrogen reacts with carbon and water to produce large amounts of methane uh, currently, most of the research has been performed under high uh, hydrogen pressure, which facilitates yielding a higher CH4 production rate from the hydrogen gasification process. However, the required severe operating conditions, including a high temperature and hydrogen pressure, result in a high level of energy consumption and uh, several safety concerns. Hydrogen gasification under mild conditions is more attractive, but it requires the addition of a suitable catalyst to increase uh, the otherwise unacceptably low reaction rate. Right. So these are the advantages. Advantage uh, means advantages. Even we know we can produce large amount of methane, but at the same time, the disadvantage is also not very small. Small in the sense because we have to go for a very high pressure and high temperature. And high pressure, you know, the safety concern will be more. We have to make very thick vessels. We have to check all the safety arrangements, safety valves, everything. So the arrangement must be very tight and very, uh, and all the seals will be very good, should be very good. So those are the concerns. So it requires a lot of capital investment again. So again, the process is same, wait to dry. And then pyrolysis, dry biofuel can produce all these things, what, what we discussed uh, previously, then primary tar to secondary tar, and some hydrogen again will be produced. And re in reduction, carbon monoxide hydrogen reaction will occur there. So again, chances of methane production here, you can see. And there will be a water gas ship reaction, carbon monoxide with uh, H2O, because this is occurring very rapidly and it will produce again uh, some hydrogen, some hydrogen will be used and this uh, hydrogen again will be produced and methanation reaction uh, that is, uh, sorry, the CH4 production. Mm. 
and then again water gas reaction that is carbon and h2o will produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen so that is again uh, it requires a lot of energy uh, right So other popular process is carbon dioxide gasification. Carbon dioxide uh, as an oxidizing agent has been explored for biomass gasification in only a limited number of studies, uh, but it is not very popular because carbon dioxide so far in the world, nowadays if you, if you see the journal papers, people are working on carbon dioxide, not only journal papers, a lot of big companies, uh, like two companies like Nutrien uh, in Trinidad Tobago, they have branches like Nutrien has a big methanol plant here as well as uh, Methanex uh, Limited from Canada. They have a very big uh, methanol plant. Now they are trying to, we are doing some project with them so that uh, they are asking me to, how to utilize this carbon dioxide because uh, uh, now everybody is working on life cycle analysis you know energy boundary and what should be the energy boundary and what is what is to be the economic boundary all these things but the prime issue is how to use this carbon dioxide um in a in a larger way in a proper way so that uh, we will give a lesser load to the nature right so carbon dioxide gasification is not so far very popular but days are not very far away when carbon dioxide people will be going to use for different purposes, right? So carbon dioxide uh, as an oxi uh, oxidizing agent has been explored for biomass gasification in only limited number of studies. Uh, from the viewpoint of CO2 consumption and CO yield enhancement, the utilization of carbon dioxide is more preferable as a gasification agent. Also CO2 is a major component of flue gases from many industries, that part I was uh, just talking about. It, it is a major cause of global warming and leads to various health issues. A major drawback with carbon dioxide gasification is that an external source of heat is constantly required to maintain the gasification temperature as the heat supplied by partial combustion of biomass in air or oxygen is not enough. So again, the process is more or less same. So drying, then pyrolysis, then primary tar to secondary tar, again, hydrogen production. Uh, Boudoir reaction will be there, but in larger amount, it may, it may occur here because carbon dioxide is always in excess present there. It is, uh, it is uh, in the formation side as well as in the feed side, right? And dry reforming reaction where carbon dioxide is reacting with natural gas to produce uh, more hydrogen and carbon monoxide. And there will, will be reverse water gas shift reaction like, like uh, each process, other processes and water gas reaction too, right? So these are the major reactions. Reaction wise, it's okay. We are, it is forming hydrogen too and we are utilizing the carbon dioxide but constant source of heat must be there. So that is a major con uh, concern. So for carbon dioxide gasification, again, the CO2 to carbon is a crucial operating variable and we try to maintain the ratio just to see the efficiency of the biomass and is defined as the ratio of CO2 flow rate to the total biomass flow rate. That is uh, CO2 over C is equal to MC over M bio, where MC is the CO2 fed into the reactor by gasification uh, agent or as an gasification agent in terms of mole or kg we can express in our way and m bio is the carbon in the feedstock right if the carbon percentage is very low say 40 percent carbon is there in a in a kind of grass or some other kind of uh, biomass we are experimenting with then you know the ratio will not be very good to go forward to move forward so now we are coming to different kind of uh, gasification means of course different kind of gasification is still there. A lot of gasification processes are going on nowadays and people are working with uh, a lot of researchers are working throughout day and night to get some uh, new avenues, right? Uh, but uh, among these, these popular processes, the 
uh, we can say some kind of combinations we can make, right? Gasification performance of biomass has significantly varied or improved by the combination of gasification technologies, right? When steam was involved in the air gasification, the mechanisms involved were mainly water gas shift reaction, right? What we have seen, right? That is CO plus H2 is giving CO2 and H2, right? And it's an exothermic reaction. It is producing hydrogen. So hydrogen is a very good fuel, clean fuel. And uh, the steam reforming reaction, that is uh, steam is reacting with uh, natural gas to produce again carbon monoxide and uh, hydrogen. However, the CO yield was decreased from 14 to 4 volume percent. So if you see, that is, uh, of course, this is not, this data has come from some particular experiments uh, by some people. Uh, some people means uh, not for a particular experiment, means set of experiments you can say. When people, because people, if you see the journal papers, people are working, I mean, especially in Asian countries, in India, China, people are working with uh, rice husk for a long time, right? All the husks are being used as biomass for a long time, right? So they gave this kind of data. It may not be 14 always. It may be, say, 13.5 uh, or 12 to, um, yeah, some other percentage. Maybe it is around 4. But overall, we can say 14 to 4% volume, right? CO yield. A decrease from 14 to 4 percent volume that is 70 around 71 percent decrease right when steam was involved in the air gasification and the mechanism involved was mainly the water gas shift reaction so co plus h2a is uh, co2 plus h2 <coughs> so that means what is happening here so if we make a combination of air gasification with steam, we are uh, getting some benefit and process is getting improved, right? We can modify the process that way. But again, we have to arrange the reactors in such a way. We have to give some extra, I mean, uh, clearance for the reactor because it will involve a large amount of volume. So it's it. a lot of things will come. So a lot of capital investment will be there. But after doing all this thing, if we get some extra value, extra currency from the market in terms of energy, then it will be good for us. When CO2 was involved in the air gasification, it's a combination of CO2 and air, you can understand. And the mechanism involved was mainly the Boudoir reaction. So then it was just like carbon, carbonaceous material is reacting with carbon dioxide to give CO other than the general reactions, right? So now the energy potentials for gasification technologies, very basic equations are being used to see the energy potentials uh, for gasification, right? Uh, mostly the energy potential of the gasification technology can be assessed uh, or evaluated by cold gasification effi uh, efficiency, that is CGE and uh, mm, energy efficiency, exergy efficiency means energy plus uh, all the, um, our heat together, exothermicity, etc. when we, uh, we are talking together. Sometimes seen gas, the HHV high heating value, seen gas yield, CH4 yield and H2 yield can also be used to evaluate the energy potential of a gasification technology. Among these evaluating methods, CG is the most frequently used one of the uh, popular method and is defined as CGE, right? <clears throat> that is cold gasification efficiency is equal to lower heating value of seen gas. Lower heating value generally they are expressed in terms of megajoule per normal meter cube by the FG, that is uh, the flow rate of seen gas or the production rate of seen gas. And it is divided by the LHS, that is the lower heating value of the uh, biomass 
and fs by fs fs is the feed rate of biomass uh, it can be kg per second and according to our unit to unit choice we can put these things and lower heating value and higher heating value you know that there these two terms are yeah, these two terms are used in hydrocarbon uh, energy getting classifications right so i'm not going into the details or the definitions basically lower heating value means it starts from 25 degree the daytime temperature is 25 degree centigrade and it goes up to a temperature i think around 150 degree centigrade and it checks all the means what are the energy requirement or how much energy we are getting by burning it or by the combust it but it is not uh, uh, considering one thing that uh, to get the value because uh, when it is going at a normal pressure up to 150 degrees centigrade then uh, the water whatever water will be formed it will be in a steam form right so we are not recovering the extra energy of the steam whereas higher heating value means when we will write hhv right so that will be slightly different uh, so it will be higher heating value means it will start from the process will start from 25 degrees centigrade it will go up to a higher temperature again will cool every the total system to 25 degrees centigrade and steam will be condensed at the temperature so we can recover or other uh, or the vaporization of steam will go with the uh, with the uh, energy we are getting so that extra will be there the steam value of uh, heat or in terms of energy that will be there for hhv some definitions are there which hhv also so in this case if we write hhv g by fg divided by hhv s by fs that also can be possible right so some cases we can define it that way also So it is given. See if you see the HHV is written there. Some cases, uh, sometimes in gas HHV also. Yeah, we can use uh, high heating value. So now LHVG is the lower heating value. What I have said, the syngas, uh, uh, that is syngas uh, megajoules per normal meter cube, and FG is the production rate of syngas meter cube per second and LHV is the biomass uh, megajoule per kg means how we are expressing if uh, because biomass it's difficult when it is solid it's difficult to express per meter cube right when it is gas we can express it per meter cube so we have to express it per kg and then also uh, it is multiplied with some flow rate so that flow rate should be also in kg so that kg will cancel out we'll get a megajoule per second in numerator as well as in the denominator the lhv of syngas that is lhv g can be calculated as lhv summation of vi lhvi that is uh, where vi is the volumetric concentration of combustible gases means all gases we are talking about like h2 co ch4 etc so whatever gases are there we can segregate or we can designate the gases then uh, according to its fraction mole fraction or its percentage we can uh, use this equation so lhvi is uh, the ith component might be it is carbon monoxide h2 uh, ch4 etc or uh, vi also that i is same in some publications cg is also defined just now what i have told that hhvg by fg hhvs and fs uh, in the same way right Uh, now another kind of uh, gasifications of some uh, kind of gasifications are there uh, um, I'm uh, asking chair how many time is uh, uh, how many means so what is the time right now means sir uh, it is here from seven o'clock only so sir, yes, uh, it's almost here okay. there so you can uh, try to finish so it I, uh, but, did, yeah. did, did, I, did I cover 90 minutes? Yeah, no, no, it's not 90 minutes. That's okay. Just uh, I would like to give some time for participant. So, oh, okay, are... okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm rather slow, quite or no, that's no, why yeah, I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's why. Okay, that's why I was asking. Uh, what is the time elapsed by my lecture? 
uh, am I taking more time or it should be more faster? So that's why I'm asking. Is it okay, right? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so oxygen gasification is another kind of popular process. So what we have told that as compared with air gasification, oxygen gasification results in a syn gas with no or less N2. N2 might be there with the biomass, but basically we are not getting the N2. So heat diffusion chances are less, so we can use uh, the heat directly. The CGs uh, are between the uh, the <coughs> CGs, the uh, cold gasification efficiency, what just we have defined, are between 28% and 85%. These values to 28 to 85 are generally lower than the CGs of uh, air gasification, where we are getting that is 36% uh, to 84%. This is mainly because uh, the combustible gases like H2CO and CH4, etc., are combusted or consumed by the rich oxygen. And the mechanism involved may be combustion, means direct combustion, right? Directly oxygen is being used where the oxygen used from air, always there will be a question of efficiency, right? Uh, then steam gasifications are there where steam is directly used, what we have described uh, previous also, where uh, similar to oxygen gasification, steam gasification also averages dilution of nitrogen. On the other hand, steam gasification would generate H2H -H syn gas mainly through water gas reactions uh, and steam reforming uh, methanization and water gas seep reaction, etc. that you know already. And carbon dioxide gasification, which is not very popular, but carbon dioxide gasification would also result in a high CG um, uh, because it avoids into dilution first and it produces rich CO and H2 um, by this reaction because we know the steam reforming reaction and the Boudoid reaction and methanization. Uh, steam reforming, methanization, and water gas reaction. However, it would yield a low CG again if the gas uh, if the gasification agent like carbon dioxide is not efficiently or completely consumed. Because if it is not uh, consumed properly, because carbon dioxide itself doesn't have any chance to go for any oxidation product or anything. So that's why what will happen? It will absorb the heat. So. Efficiency of the reaction must we should uh, look for, right? So, so I want to wrap up before wrapping up. Just uh, I didn't uh, give you any idea of the reactors, how the reactors will look like, but uh, it's not, I didn't uh, um, focus on the scope of different reactors. I just say that what are the processes, how gasification, what are the classifications of gasification. And there are different kind of designs. Uh, this is the updraft. The fuel is coming down and gas is coming out and air is uh, uh, coming from the bottom. And this is basically counter current. And both the cases, second case also downdraft. It is, uh, it is also a counter current uh, reaction, but gas is coming out from the bottom, right? And next is we, we know that is a fluidized bed where fuel will be fluidized at a high temperature, the reaction will occur. And uh, from the bottom gas will go to the, the cyclone separator and gas will come out. And this is a fuel, oxygen and steam all are uh, entering together. It is combusted and and after combustion, uh, of course, production of uh, carbon monoxide, hydrogen, everything will be there and gas will come out from the section. But at the bottom, in each reaction at the bottom, we will get the ash content. But at ash content at a very high temperature, when the temperature due to exothermicity and we are giving a lot of heat, so all together when the temperature will reach say around 1200 degrees centigrade or so, or more than 1000, the ash will be in the molten state. So we can take out this ash as a slag, right? So, and this is the, it's slightly better picture. Uh, it's uh, the how oxygen is entering into the system and it is a, a biomass. We are dropping from the top and at the bottom, we are getting the slag, the high temperature zone and <clears throat> 
and gas will come out eventually with with uh, yeah, it will it will come out uh, just like the biomass will act as a packed bed and it will exchange some amount of heat as well as that if that some that mass that in a mass enriching is required it will it will go, go out from the system right so these two uh, these two pictures are not any special picture i have taken directly from wikipedia that's why i have written it at the bottom and so far in my parents yeah anybody is telling me anything uh, no no there is some uh, technical problem was there oh, okay 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 so i'm continuing so this presentation was uh this presentation was prepared from the write up what i got from yeah this uh, this uh, book that is uh, sustainable resource recovery and zero waste approaches uh it is published in 2019 by couple of authors lot of authors are there and is chapter 14 gasification technologies and their energy potentials so i have taken and rather some part i have taken directly from those uh, from that write up and these are the two references mostly i have used are this uh, this the reference uh, what i described here as well as uh, the wikipedia uh, diagrams right so that's it for today from my behalf uh, my presentation i reached to the end uh, so thanks for listening and uh, do you have any question yeah you can ask me now uh, thank you sir one of the participant uh, i will also ask her to just uh, unmute this her mic and uh, dr jyoti kaushik uh, can you just unmute and uh, ask her self uh, regarding your query sir good evening sir ah good evening i have a few questions sir in yeah. uh, pyrolysis whether we will get only gas or liquid also sir no pyrolysis you... always yeah we'll uh, we we are getting liquid yeah at the same okay. time we are getting liquid. yeah okay. first gas will come after that we have to condense into liquid yeah some condense uh, we have uh, some liquids will be there but at the bottom also sometimes we are getting liquid so now modern pyrolytic chambers uh, there are some arrangement to uh, take it out separately some uh, yeah like that yes oh. at high temperature of course everything will be vaporized and uh, yeah we can condense it yes we should condense it of course yeah In, any, catal any catalyst uh, to increase the reaction uh, rate or to reduce the reaction temperature sir uh there are catalysts uh, being used but the temperature reduction always doesn't give a better uh, yield so you know reaction rate always there should be a matching between reaction rate and yield so there are catalysts uh, which can uh, yeah which can reduce the uh, activation energy so that we can use it but at the same time we have to keep in mind the optimization between the reaction temperature and the exothermicity we have to making a match so that's the thing any any commercially available uh, pyrolysis reactor sir a uh, commercially available pyrolysis reactor means uh, it's already being used like uh, if you go to a steel plant right steel no, plant of course scale. for small scale for uh, research purpose or for uh, project purpose for academic yes, institutions yes for for academic institutions uh, really i don't have idea and somo can say it better but our chair can say it better whether they are using any pyrolysis reactor small level small level exactly i don't know so far what i have used is just pilot level but but pe people are using because i know iit guwahati there is a group of people who are working oh. with this pyrolysis uh, in a small level but i think still you have to design it right yes, yes so yeah okay sir okay thank you sir all right uh, another question was there sir one uh, the participant asking that how she can face the data to design a reactor for biofuel synthesis ah uh, that's a good question uh, for that data means uh, so for the data available means what kind of feedstock uh, she is using that is very important uh, right so that is very important what kind of feedstock if it is corn stover switch grass or some kind of very common material right lot of data are there 
thousands of journal papers people are working for a long time so you have to compile the data from the those papers as well as some people like i know orissa there are plants they are using this rice husk to get some extra heat they are using it for a small level boiler right yeah. so you can get the data so that will not be a problem but this kind of feedstock if your feedstock is totally new then you have to do some gasification or some calorific value uh, generation experiment in your lab to see that right yeah and another participant asking uh, what type of packing we can use in the reactor this type of packing uh so far the packing for problem the packing is uh, generally we are use we are using the packing for different kind of separation operation like distillation extraction etc to give more surface area and here biomass itself continuously feed it from the top and it is being getting used in a column right and uh, we are exhausting it and from the bottom we are getting the slag as well as gas is coming out from any any place so from the top or bottom right we can use that but the packing itself if it is a packed bed reactor means some kind of packing we are thinking about then it will be difficult because the channeling will be there char formation coke formation will be there if we use any artificial packing we have to keep in mind the packing should be made of this uh, this uh, our uh, what is it the, the biomass only so that biomass will come down to the system we must be careful packing means there should not be any channeling when bio biomass will be packed in the system because the things will be done continuously so when the gas generation and very high temperature all these things act together and some kind of liquid formation in the mid stage will be there then there will be a chance of hanging right you will see no movement of any biomass so that must be very clear biomass should move fast from the top to the bottom there must be good intermolecular or oh, sorry a, 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 i mean interbiomass spaces so that gas can travel down as well as upward right yeah so that is the packing packing by biomass we we, we should not use it's not recommended to use any 